Okay guys, so we've got the oven back up on its uh, on its legs again, off its side. And now what we're gonna do is, we've got it pre-drilled from underneath. We have it marked, so we're gonna drill here. In this area, right over here, to bring the wires up for the back of the oven for the elements. Uh, everything else is already run. So we have it uh, ready to go here. As you can see, the wires coming out through the bottom on that side. And here on this side, the wire is just sitting there because of course it's coming from the actual panel and down. All right, so we'll get going and we'll get that drilled and we'll move that wiring up. And then we'll, uh, we'll start with mounting of the uh, elements. Okay guys, so we got the wires fished through. We left a little bit of play underneath so we can get the insulation in there. But uh, there she is. So we'll turn the oven around and uh, start working on where we're actually going to be putting the uh, heat elements. Okay, so we also will have uh, two sets of the elements up higher and two sets on the other side or the left and right panel uh, lower uh, to help uh, even out the, uh, the heat within the actual uh, casement. And I'll show you how that's uh, going to work out. So we've got uh, the holes drilled out. We've got the wires run in for the back panels. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to actually mount the uh, brackets. We'll make sure that they're level and squared up and then get the heat elements sitting in them. Uh, then what we'll do is we'll pre-drill the brace for the heat element on the top. I'll show you how that's going to come out. Let's get those uh, blocks in first or mounting brackets in first. <laughs> Okay guys, so the back elements are uh, in place. Uh, the brackets are mounted, but the electrical elements are not mounted as of yet. Uh, I like to get all of them in just to make sure that everything is, uh, is good and where we have it and mounted wise. But you notice how I left some space in between and space on each end or each corner. That'll allow more space, of course, for the uh, products that we're putting into this oven. Uh, the other ones, uh, the left and right panels, uh, will be mounted lower, okay? Uh, this oven, you'll be able to hang hang stuff in it. Uh, you'll be able to put a rack. Oh, you'll be uh, multi-purpose. Okay, guys. So, as you can see, we've got uh, all the elements uh, mounted. Uh, we still have to do uh, the wiring, of course, and the top brace where you see that black tape. That we'll get to uh, once we get ready to uh, wire everything up. But placement is perfect. Uh, if you can take a look and see that. Okay, so you notice that the left and right panels are lower and the back panels are higher. Well, with this oven, you'll have full control over uh, your elements. So you'll be able to run uh, the two back elements uh, at startup and then add a left and right uh, as needed depending on uh, what you're actually uh, heating up. Uh, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna get to uh, installing a light and the thermocoupler. And uh, I'll show you that. Okay guys, so we've got uh, the light installed. Uh, is that, there's the thermocoupler. Okay, and it comes up and around. And there's a thermocoupler that comes through and down. I haven't run the wires yet for the light, but that will come soon. And uh, there are 
the heat on. It's, we're getting there. She's looking good. After we get uh, the wiring all done and we do a test run, then it'll be uh, high temp silicone all on the seams and then uh, build the door, insulation, and then uh, to paint. And this oven will be uh, complete, complete soon. Thanks guys. So we're going to pre-mark our uh, coils today. So I'm going to put make sure they're in the right position. They should be right up against the back wall of the oven, like so. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark it, and then we'll take those out and uh, pre-drill. Uh, we're going to pre-drill a hole through here with a nut and bolt coming from the back side, and we're going to repeat that four times. Okay guys, so all the mounting posts are uh, put in for the top of the uh, burners. As you can see, I removed the uh, mounting brackets. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna shoot some high temp paint in behind the brackets and also inside the brackets. And then once we uh, mount them back up, they won't have to be ever removed again because this uh, inner liner will be painted with some high temp paint. But this way I can actually get the uh, test run to go and also have everything covered up on the inside okay guys so we're going to go ahead and uh, just give the inner part of this some paint my temp paint because once we mount this back on we'll never have to take it off again and it'll also allow me to get the wires uh, all set up when you move over here, you'll notice that I've given it a shot of paint in behind them, okay? So what we'll do is we'll give that a second coat, and then we'll get those ones down there, brackets uh, painted, mount it back on and get the uh, coils put in, and then uh, we'll wire it up and see how everything goes. Okay guys, so I put the the ends on the uh, the cables here, and you also can see I did the, the pigtails with uh, the fiberglass sheeting. Um, that's what the actual terminals look like, okay? And of course they're uh, crimped in and uh, heat shrunk. Uh, and then what we'll do is we'll put the fiberglass over top individually, and then a cap that goes over this side and this side, and then we super glue them together. And that's what the turn out to look like, okay? Okay guys, so we've got the heat elements all uh, mounted and wired in. Uh, now we'll start to uh, wire up the control panel. Control panel will be wired up to just on a temporary basis. Uh, so we can do a test run and then we'll actually have to remove all of this and paint it But uh, she's looking pretty good Okay guys, so this morning we actually received uh, a material order. Uh, this is actually material is going to be for our door um, What I'm using for the door itself is one and a half inch angle iron one eighth now, a lot of guys out there are manufacturing doors and they're using tubes uh, in the past I've, I've also done that what i find is because the tubes are rounded corners uh, also they have a tendency to slag or, or to uh, sag i should say by using angle iron it's uh it's a lot more work to put the door together uh, but you definitely don't get any uh any sag in the actual door um, and i'll show you how i do that this door is actually going to have a, a sight gloss so while uh, your product's inside and getting powder coated or heated, uh, you'll be able to see it. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to actually mount the two side panels and uh, or the two side uh, edges for the door and tack them to the actual subframe and then go from there. I'll show you the, how that works.
Okay, so I cut the top rail. This is the for the bottom. But let's move over to the oven. And there she is. Okay. So you can see how that's sitting in there. I mean, just step on a step ladder. This is a big oven. And you can see how I've done that. Okay, so I channeled it. So the, your next angle iron will go on top. And it goes right across. Okay, and there she is. So we'll tack that on the inside. No longer have to tack anything to the actual uh, oven anymore. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll continue with the bottom. So I got the top part up here for the door, so you can see how it's welded. Okay. So basically we're making a tube, okay? So why we're using the angle iron is because the corner of the angle iron is a lot stronger. So when we put this on top, um, like so, we've got ourselves a nice square edge. It's kind of hard doing this, holding the camera and there we go. I might be moving that too fast, but that's what it looks like. So we're going to measure this one up, cut it, and we'll do the same at the bottom. And then we'll put uh, some supports for the uh, for the glass. Okay, guys, so you can see I put the uh, braces now for the cyclos. And, of course, I'm still using the same angle iron. So what I've done is I've got one facing on the inward lip. You can see that. And the glass will lean up against that. Okay, and then what I've done here is the same, and then I reversed one, okay, going the other way, so when the panel, inside panel, will have somewhere to mount. Okay, and then we'll put the cross sections for the glass. Okay, and that'll be all a continuous weld. And you can see that's gonna make it a very sturdy door. So it should be absolutely zero sagging, or sagging. Uh, the only issue, uh, you know, it's gonna be a heavy door. But any, any oven of this size is going to have a big door and it's going to be heavy. Okay, so even if I did it in tubular, it would be very heavy. Okay guys, so you can see that uh, the framing of the door is done with the sight glass. Uh, it's been uh, welded. We'll have to continue some welds on that and grind those welds nice and smooth. So when we put the sheeting on top, it'll uh, work out nicely. And we have to actually put uh, one more angle iron on the actual uh, right side of the oven, uh, just for the handle to mount to. But uh, she's looking pretty good. All right, so we've got uh, the power bar out of the controller. And now what I've done is you can see that I've removed some of the slots. So what we're going to do is we're going to label. So the, the four pin here is going to be white because we don't require that many uh, in this unit because it is uh, 240. Uh, so the white is only going to be used for uh, 110, which would be the light and the fan. Uh, and then of course you're going to have your, your hot uh, 120 and hot 120 here, okay? I'm going to label them so there's no confusion. Uh, I usually use uh, a marker and I'll show you what that's going to look like in a second. Okay, so these are the actual uh, markers that I use. They're a paint marker and so you can see that I've labeled the white and the red. Of course the black is 
this block because the plastic is. Um, so now what we're going to do is we're going to create hoops, okay? So one lug will take in the power and then we'll hoop it over to the second, okay? Uh, and basically it's, it's bridging, okay? So you're bridging them over, okay? So you'll be bridging the red. So you'll have three uh, terminals that you can actually hook up to the red and three terminals that you can hook up to the block and two terminals that you can hook up to the white. Okay guys, so that's uh, what the bridge looks like. And then what'll happen is it'll connect there and then loop over, okay? Uh, it's kind of hard doing it with one hand, but what I'll do is I'll put the camera down and then I'll mount one and I'll show you how that's gonna look. Okay, so there it is. So what we'll do is now is we'll create another one and we'll hook it up to this unit here. Okay, and that's basically called a bridge and then it'll happen with these also and with the white. I'll get making those and then uh, I'll put them on and then show you uh, what they all look like once they're all set. see the bridges are done and you can see that it is labeled right so now what we're going to do is the legs that uh, come out from our wall or from our power plug are going to go here here and here and that's going to give us two whites of course three reds and three black and we'll get that uh, wired up and I get this mounted back into the box uh, control panel and then uh, we'll wire up the power to it and of course you're going to have a fourth wire which is the ground and that is actually going to be grounded off to the box okay guys so i've got the power cord uh, wired into uh, our control panel uh, so you can see that we've got the red the red here white and black okay and those are going to be hooked up to our power bar our distributor bar and uh, our ground is right there and this will be cut mounted to the control panel well, we'll do that and we'll get that wired up and I'll show you exactly what that's going to look like okay guys so you can see that I've got the light wire ran and the thermocoupler wire ran it's coming down through here and into the control panel We've got all the wiring run into the control panel, labeled and ready to uh, wire this thing up and bring it on to a test run. This is the uh, the coupler, the heat coupler, or thermostat coupler. Uh, one thing with these here, they are uh, metal shielded. Uh, so when you're running it through your control panel, you have to shield it. So run some electrical tape across it. This way it doesn't short anything out. Uh, there is a guard for this, a plastic guard that will go on that, and that will protect uh, from anything touching it. But you will really want to make sure that this doesn't short anything out. She's, uh, she's getting there. We should be able to get uh, a test run soon. Okay, guys. So we've got uh, the test run going. Uh, as you can see, we've got the back burners uh, up and running. I'm going to come over to the side here. You can tell I have the box all out right now. I've got to get the fan running, so something's up with the fan. But uh, so far the test run is looking really good. I'm going to turn on another burner and we're going to see how that works. Okay, so we got the third burner running. Oh, let's see if we can get that fourth burner on. Let's see how, where we're at from there. So far, so good. Okay, guys, so we've got power on all four burners. It's looking good. Uh, we'll shut her down and uh, 
get her ready for paint and seal and everything else. Awesome. Okay guys, so they're just, uh, they're cooling off. We had all four running. Uh, so what uh, we're gonna do now is uh, we're gonna move on to uh, cleaning up this wiring. Of course, we have to remove this box still and paint it and so forth. Uh, and of course, put the outer sheeting, but uh, I'm glad she's up and running. And I know it looks like a mess right now, but we'll tidy all that wiring up. And uh, she's, uh, she's running good. So the next uh, step would be to uh, do all the sealing uh, all the way around high time silicone on all the seams and then of course insulating and then uh, getting ready for the, uh, the outer sheeting and uh, of course finishing up the door. Uh, the door we completely welded uh, off camera and uh, smoothened out all the welds so it's ready for uh, its sheeting handle, hinges, and of course, uh, Cyclos. We're getting there. I think we're gonna call this a wrap for this video, and uh, we'll uh, continue with our project. Guys, I really appreciate you guys watching. Please subscribe and like, of course. It helps out the channel. I appreciate it. Thanks.